It was May 13th, 1985, long-standing tensions between the Philadelphia Police Department and a black liberation group erupted when that city's mayor approved a bombing at the group's headquarters. 11 people died as a result of the fire that ensued just two months later to the day and a few miles away, now famous Live Aid concert was held to fight famine in Africa. The coincidence of the concert being held so closely after the bombing was not lost on Chris Morrow, the writer of Summer of 85, a new docuseries on Audible exploring the complex history of these events. Chris joins us now here in studio. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. What about these two events specifically led you to this docuseries? Well, I'm a Philadelphia native. Uh, I went to Live Aid as a teenager. Both the move bombing and Live Aid always played big parts in my mind. I never really connected them, though. And I began to wonder about how could you have all these rock stars coming together in Philadelphia in the summer of 85 to, quote unquote, save Africa. Uh, the same summer that, as you said, two months to the day earlier, uh, 11 people with the last name of Africa, including five children, uh, were murdered, essentially. And the dissonance of that happening in the same city so close together always stuck with me, and that's what really drew me to the story. And you were how old at the time? Uh, I'll admit to being 14 that summer. Okay, in so that's, a, that's an impressionable age. Sure. These two things happen, uh, you know, one so spectacular, Live Aid is still talked about to this day, and, and one that maybe is not talked about to this day. Sure. Um, you know, this, the, the tensions were so high between the group, the group move, uh, and, and, and the police department. Um, then there was this bombing and people died and there was destruction. Why is this so largely unknown right now, still to many people? Well, I think that's actually one of the other reasons I was drawn to it, being someone from Philly, even as close here in New York City, mentioning this, pe this to people over the years, no one knows what I'm talking about. This is largely a mystery to people. And I think uh, probably the most charitable way to answer that question is, it was so painful to people that they tried to bury this. And certainly the city of Philadelphia had plenty of reasons to want this to go away because they do not come out looking very good from the situation. And I think this is a story, it's not a happy ending. Right. This is a story that involves the death of children. This is a story that involves the destruction of a neighborhood, essentially. This is something we really tried to emphasize during the series is um, at the time, the way this story was kind of, the narrative in Philadelphia was uh, they bombed the ghetto. Mm. This was not the ghetto. This was a working class, middle class uh, neighborhood. Uh, people owned their own homes. They were inc incredibly invested in the community. They had worked with the city to try to find a resolution to the situation. And after the bombing, not only did the 11 people die in the move compound, 61 homes were burnt to the ground. Um, yeah, that's not for nothing, whether it was they bombed the ghetto or they bombed a neighborhood. It doesn't matter. They bombed it. It should have never happened. People died. Right. Yeah. So I get that. I get that it would be difficult. Uh, you also interviewed a variety of people. It says you interviewed Patty LaBelle, Daryl mm. DMC Daniels. Right. Um, what what struck you the most when you were interviewing people about this? I think the thing that struck me the most was it was almost as if people had been waiting to talk about this for a long time. You know, this is over 35 years in the past at this point, but people had been waiting for a chance to uh, share what they remember, because I think, you know, I was not alone. This really impacted a lot of people in Philadelphia. And also the Live Aid part. Not, you know, I don't want to only focus on the move. Uh, I got a chance to go to Patti LaBelle's home and talk to her about Live Aid as a Philadelphian. That's kind of like visiting mm -hmm. uh, the Queen of England in, in, you know, Buckingham Palace. Or Bruce Springsteen in New Jersey. Even better, right? <laughs> so uh, to sit down and to hear her talk about Live Aid and start to kind of put the pieces together in her mind. There were some fabulous uh, performances in Philadelphia. Patti LaBelle's being one, Teddy Pendergrass. Yep. After being paralyzed in a car crash, this was the first time he appeared in public. And also Run DMC's performance, which in 1985, you gotta remember Live Aid was seen by almost two billion people around the world. This was the world's introduction to hip hop. And that was a story that had gotten lost over the years too. So it was just a chance to kind of bring that to the forefront. The question I want to know is why was it so important for you to put out there? And I hear bits and pieces of it when we talk. So maybe, maybe I'll modify it a little bit. Not only why was it so important for you to put it out there, but what do you want people to take from it? And not just about the events, sure. but about the fact that it took 35 years for someone to really dig into it like this and the fact that so many people were willing to talk when you did. Right. Well, look, the thing is, when you look at the story in broad strokes, what is it about? It's about police brutality. It's about inept government. It's about communities turning on each other and attacking each other. I'd love to be able to say that 35 years later, that's all in the past. Mm -hmm. And we can look back and just say, oh, 
how did that happen? But the fact is, these are still issues that we're addressing. Bits and pieces are relevant today. Extremely relevant. Even uh, the famine that uh, inspired the Live Aid concert. Unfortunately, a famine is happening in the same region of Ethiopia today, 35 years later, and some of the same forces are still behind that. So I think, unfortunately, it's very relative. And, uh, relative. and what I hope is, it sounds a little cliche, but you can't run from the past. You have to examine the past and learn how to avoid these sort of mistakes going forward. And that's really my hope from the series, is that people can look at this, learn something about a situation they probably didn't have much information on, and then say, how can we apply that to where the country is, where the city of Philadelphia is right now, and avoid this sort of situation moving forward. Chris Moore, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Summer of 85 docuseries is now available to listen to on Audible. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.